Many time domain events and signals lend themselves to analysis and understanding in the frequency domain. For example, music. When we listen to music, we appreciate the low tones and the high tones, and which all exist concurrently in time. Yet to fully understand them or to speak about what's taking place in the music, we do talk about low tones or tones that are oscillating at lower frequencies, higher pitches which are oscillating at higher frequencies. Vibrational analysis of mechanical system lends itself to, to frequency domain analysis, where vibrations or frequencies introduced by different parts of the system can be identified in the frequency domain. Broadcast radio and cell phones are all defined in terms of the frequency domain. We talk of the frequency of a, a radio station, 88.3 megahertz or 103.5 megahertz. The as we'll see, the frequency spectrum, the electromagnetic spectrum, is divided up into channels of frequencies. Seismic activity lends itself to frequency domain analysis analyzing the lower, slower traveling compression waves and then more rapidly propagating higher frequency waves allows understanding of what's taking place below the Earth's crust. Financial data is frequently, um, frequently analyzed using frequency domain techniques looking for periodic cycles, business cycles. Um, in healthcare, Lots of different signals are captured and then analyzed using frequency domain techniques. The um, ECG of a heartbeat or the brain waves measured through a number of different sensors and then analyzed using frequency domain techniques. We have here the frequency spectrum of a single organ pipe. It's a pipe whose natural frequency is oscillating at about 813 cycles per second. You'll notice the amplitudes here are, or the, um, the axis, the vertical axis is, is uh, portraying amplitude, but that it is a logarithmic um, scale. So the pipe organ, its natural or fundamental frequency is oscillating at 813 hertz, and it's up here around maybe 600, 500, 600 millivolts. You have the second harmonic, which would be two times that frequency, and then multiple harmonics, all representing different vibrational modes within the pipe itself. It's the fundamental and its harmonics that add to the richness of the pipe organ sound. This graph of the spectrum then shows energy existing at certain frequencies. We're going to see later that we can design circuits, electrical systems, that will filter out some frequencies while passing other frequencies. In other words, you can remove some of the oscillations within this pipe organ and change the tonal quality of that organ. The electromagnetic spectrum is also defined in terms of frequencies. Now electromagnetic waves can, can uh, oscillate at frequencies from very, very low frequencies on up to ultra high frequencies. I've shown here just a portion of that electromagnetic spectrum in these lower frequencies here starting around 100 kilohertz and going up to 10 megahertz we refer to the radio waves. Television frequencies come in here, but it continues on up. The electromagnetic spectrum continues on up through the infrared part of the spectrum, the visible light part of the spectrum, that part which our eyes are sensitive to, the ultraviolet, X-ray, gamma ray, and so on. So for example, the AM radio dial, if you were to look at, the, at an AM radio dial, you'd see down in the lower end, it starts at 560 kilohertz and goes up to 1600 kilohertz. These frequencies are referring to the carrier frequencies or the center frequencies of these channels. To broadcast radio waves, an antenna is, is uh, energized with a carrier that is modulated. A carrier then is a sinusoidal waveform 
in the case of, um, say, some radio stations broadcasting at 1160 cycle, kilocycles per second or kilohertz, the carrier cycle or the carrier waveform itself would be oscillating at 1160 cycles per second. It is then modulated or multiplied by a more slowly varying or a lower frequency signal. And by modulation, we mean multiplying. So that the effect then is taking this carrier and modifying or modulating its amplitude, thus amplitude modulation, or AM. It's a higher frequency waveform whose amplitude is varied by a smaller waveform. That then is energized or applied to an antenna and then broadcast out into the world and your antenna and your receiver can pick it up and then you have a tuner that allows you to listen to just that one station at a time. Yet simultaneous with the broadcast of that one station are all of the other AM radio stations. The television stations run between, the channels 1 through 6 run between 38 and 85 megahertz. So on up here in this range, you'll find television stations, at least the lower frequency channel stations. The FM radio dial goes from 88 megahertz up to 107.9 megahertz. Again, referring to their, um, to their, uh, carrier frequencies. And so on. The microwave oven is dedicated at 2.3 gigahertz. That's the frequency that the water, ox that the, um, hydrogen oxygen molecular bond of water oscillates most um, most efficiently. So at any given time you could put an antenna up into the up into the air and you would be picking up radio waves or electromagnetic energy across all of these different frequencies. Every channel that's broadcast, every police band radio, every cell phone conversation that's going on, all of those time domain signals exist concurrently with time. Yet somehow, we're able to separate all of the signals but the one that we're most interested in at that time. If it's our cell phone, we're interested only in our own cell phone conversation. We don't want to be picking up the radio stations, the television stations, and the police radar all on the same, at the same time. So then we have circuits which are designed to filter out certain frequencies and pass other frequencies. These filters are also characterized in the frequency domain. We're going to talk about four different types of filters. A low-pass filter is a filter that's designed to allow only lower frequencies through. We refer to this area here as the pass band, or the band of frequencies, the channel of frequencies that this filter would allow. This area out here is referred to as the stop band. And frequencies in this range would be attenuated by the filter. And we define the transition between the pass band and the stop band as the cutoff frequency. We're going to see that these filters are defined and unanalyzed in the frequency domain. I have shown here a high-pass filter. A high-pass filter has its stop band here where it will eliminate or attenuate frequencies or signals that exist in these frequency ranges and pass those in the higher frequencies. A band-pass filter is a filter that allows um, frequencies within a given band to pass and anything below and anything above that channel would be attenuated. A band reject filter is a filter that's designed to eliminate just one signal or a narrow band of signals. The stop band, would it, any signals within the stop band uh, would be attenuated and signals outside that range would be passed through the filter. We now then are going to start the study of these frequency selective circuits and understand how they work in terms of analog filters involving resistance, inductance, and capacitance. These filters take advantage of the fact that the impedances of capacitors and inductors are dependent upon frequency. The impedance 
of a capacitor we know to be 1 over j omega c. In other words, the impedance of the capacitor is inversely proportional to the frequency. On the other hand, the impedance of an inductor is equal to j omega l, so that the impedance of the inductor is directly proportional to frequency. As the frequency gets greater, the impedance of the inductor increases. In the capacitor, as the frequency gets greater, as the frequency increases, the impedance of the capacitor decreases. It's these two properties that then allow us to design filters with these different characteristics.